Welcome back everyone. <clears throat> in the previous video, we have explained the architecture of this project. We have seen how we will construct the layer on top of each other to implement the server side. Uh, so right now, in this project uh, or in this video, we are going to start with the repositories. And basically, we will start with the user profile, with the profiles repository, which is the first one. And the first function that uh, the system will do. After the user logs in successfully via the Microsoft P2C Azure Active Directory, then uh, we will go to the database and check if there is any profile associated with the user ID. If there is any, so okay, then we will log this user in or bring it to the right page, whether he's an organizer or a normal user. But if he is, if he doesn't have any account, so in this case, what we should do is to allow him to create a new account. So basically, we'll start creating the repositories. We will create the first user I profiles repository. Then we will create the unit of work, and after that, we will start implementing the services of this user profiles that the controllers or the user profiles controller will depend on. So to get started, let's right-click on the server here and choose new project. And basically, I'm going to click here. And I'll type tickets basket dot repositories okay great so let's get rid of this class here click delete nice so right now there is a very important question that in the repository pattern that every developer asks which is should I have a generic repository or should I create a repository for each single entity so well having a generic repository will prevent or some repetition for the code, but it will add a lot of restrictions to while you are writing this. But creating a specific repository for each entity, this gives to you a lot of freedom, a lot of flexibility while you are creating those repository and you don't need or you are not specified or limited with those four or five functions that the generic repository profiles, which is basically get by ID, get all, um, you can add more functions and make it more flexible, but sometimes not all the entities need this. So you can go with the each repository for each um, entity, and this is what I will do. So let's see how I'll implement this. I will start first by creating a new interface called iUserProfiles. iUserProfiles repository, like this. Great, and here we will define the general function that this one will do. But before, let me add the dependency from the models here. Great. So, right now, let's start typing the function that this will repository will do. So, first, let's create async, which is create a user profile. User profile like this. Then, what I'm going to to do is to retrieve by ID so user profile here get by ID async user profile ah, sorry ID string ID here and then there here we have a specific function only for this repository which is get by user ID string user id the user id of the azure from the azure p2c tenant and you will have remove user profile nice and at the end we will call update user profile user profile just like this so nice this is all the functions that we need we don't need to retrieve all the users or the profiles in one case maybe we will we need this in case when we create an admin panel for the owners of the business or the website owners which is me in this case or you for the repository that you are working on or your project but this is out of the school for this course so there is no need to have or retrieve all right now let's create an implementation for this repository I'll create a new class call it user Profiles repository, which is basically an entity framework implementation 
Okay, implement this class and that's it. Now, what we should do is to inject an instance of application DB context here and create the constructor. So DB context DB. You can create the constructor here directly by typing CTOR tour for an abbreviation and hit tab twice. So in this case, you can use the snippet and this increases your productivity. Okay, now I'll mark this as async and db dot add sorry dot user profiles dot add async and we add this user profile here now for the get by id uh, sorry i forget the await here as well add async okay sorry for that await ah come on i'm making a lot of mistakes now user profiles dot find async let's add the id here Great. Now let's move to this one. Okay, here I forgot the return. I'm forgetting a lot of things today. So let's add async here, then return await db.userprofiles.single or default async. And here I'll type user profile lambda expression dot user id equals equals user id okay there is something weird here uh, it looks like the user id is not existing in the user profile let's navigate for it uh, click go to definition okay ah sorry for this i forget to add the user id of uh, from the azure active directory tenant so let's add that and update our database and it should be required like this so great Right now, let's migrate this database and update it. Okay, so here, choose the API and let's add migration, add user ID to user profile. Click OK. Nice, now let's call update database. That's great. Okay, so right now, this one should work perfectly. Great, for the remove, it's good, it's going to be as well. Remove and this user profile. And for this one, basically the update process happens in the entity framework. Well, you know, you can retrieve this, uh, let's say, the item, for example, get by ID, you update the properties and you call save the changes and that's it. So what happens here is whenever you set any properties, entity framework modified this, or let's say what we should do is to mark this as modification. So you can type db.entry and here we pass user profile dot state, just set it to modified and that's it. So, as you notice here, I haven't called uh, save changes in any function like create or remove or update. Be without, we will do this in the unit of work in the next video while we will start creating the unit of work. So, I don't prefer to put it here because in the services, there's going to be a set of logic, a set of operations, read and write, related to the same, let's say, uh, process or the same business logic so in this case I'll put all of them together then at the end we call comment changes and that's it so right now maybe you will ask like what is the difference why we need those repositories while uh, we already like calling this code and it looks like that entity framework implemented those repositories already okay well maybe I've uh, explained this in the previous video but right now our code and the services, let me first move this to another file. Okay. So right now, our services will be based on this interface, not on the one here, this class, that based on entity framework. So our services will have the freedom 
and they don't know anything about what's going on here and they are not rely at all on entity framework while they are relying on those services so maybe if you want to make some unit testing you can just simply mock this repository mock this interfaces create some dummy implementation and you can you have much much more flexibility for this reason we are going with this approach so this is the first repository we have created right now right and in the next video we'll start implementing the unit of work and put this repository inside it and then after that we'll start implementing the services so thank you so much for watching and see you in the next video